Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be adding pagination links to our pagination pages. So we come over here to the pagination links post and let me just zoom in right here. So this is what we're going to be doing. So every time we navigate to the entry page or the second page in our list of pagination pages, we have to manually input the URL into the search bar of the browser, which isn't a great user experience. So to resolve this issue, we're going to be adding the pagination links to each pagination page. So if we come over here to the local development server, and if I go to all posts up here, you can see right here is the entry page in our list of pagination pages, and there's no link for us to click on on the page that'll bring us to the next pagination page. So we have to manually go up here, type it in, and now we can go to the page two post right here. All right, so this is what we have to do right now to get to the second page. So we're gonna be adding those pagination links to be able to easily navigate in between these pages. All right, so to accomplish this, we'll be using the following properties provided by the blog plugin client API. So we have the pagination.hasprev, the pagination.prev link, the pagination.hasnext, and then the pagination.next link property. So these properties we discussed in a previous tutorial. So you can check that out if you haven't already. Now, before we use the properties to add the pagination links, we're going to be adding two more example posts to the blog. So this will allow us to view the pagination links in every scenario. So i.e. when there isn't a previous page, like on the entry page, when there isn't a next page, like on the last page, and when there is a previous page and a next page. So a page that would be in between the first page and the last page. So any page in between there. All right, and you can view all of the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 19 branch of the Code Monkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can come right here and you can get all of the code that we will be using in this tutorial. All right, so let's get on to adding more example pages. So we're gonna be adding the following example pages to the post directory. So let me just come over here. You can see over here, I just have the index post.view file open and then I have the local development server running down here in this terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another terminal and we're going to go into the docs directory and then we're going to go inside of the post directory right here. And if we list out the contents in here, you can see that we have our previous example pages that we made in a previous tutorial. And then here are the new example pages. So these example pages right here. So these files right here, these markdown files, I've already created them, but you can create them by doing touch and then you could type in um, 2022 for the year and then we have 07 14 and then you could just type in example page dash four dot mb press enter and then you could create this example page in your post directory now I've already created this so I'm not going to run that command all right so after doing that your post directory should look something like this where you have the five example pages right there and now we're going to be adding some titles and front matter to our new example pages. So we're going to be adding the post titles and front matter to the example pages we just added like we did for the other example pages. All right, so I'm just going to clear out this terminal. Let me just close that out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up the example pages we just made. So we'll open up example page four and this is what the example page four file and the example page five file are gonna look like after we add the titles in the front matter. So I'm just gonna copy this in and then we'll paste this in and then we'll just save this. So this is the example page four right here. And what we have here is we have our preview. So our custom preview variable right here, we just set it to example post four preview. We have our image, so this will be in the examples. And then we have our example post four directory, and then we have our example post four image. So we'll talk about adding those images in a little bit. And then we have our alt attribute for the image tag. So we're just saying example post four post picture, and then we just have our post title of example post four right there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to do the same thing for our example page five. So we'll just copy this and then we will paste that. Let's just save the file. So this is our example page five. We have the preview sample post five preview right up there. 
that image. So the path to our example page five image, it's gonna be in our examples directory and then in an example post five directory. And then in the image is gonna be example post five. It's gonna be a PNG right there. And then we just have the alt custom variable, which will be the alt attribute in our image tag, like we did in a previous tutorial. And that's going to be example post five post picture. And then we just have the title right here of example post five. All right, so now all of these custom variables and this front matter and the post titles, all of this we covered in a previous tutorial. So if you have any questions about it, then go back to watch the video or to read through that tutorial. All right, so now let's talk about adding the images. So we also need to add the post images for the example pages we just added. So we'll do this just like we did in the previous tutorial by creating a directory for each example post inside of the examples directory. And then we'll add the post images to the directories for each example post. So if I open up a terminal over here and we go inside of the docs directory, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna to wanna to go inside of our .viewpress. So we'll cd into .viewpress, and then we're gonna go into public images examples. And if we list out the contents in there, you can see that I've already created the example post four in the example post five directory. And so, but this is how you create them right here. And now just a quick note here is that you can download all of the images for the example post four and the example post five, you can download all of them directly from the browser right here on the blog post. And they're also available in the tutorial 19 branch of the Code Monkeys blog tutorials repository. All right, so this is the example post four. So for the fourth example post, we're gonna be adding that example post four directory. So to do that, you could just do mkdir and then you can type in example post four like this, press enter, and then that will create the example post four directory for you inside of the examples directory. And then inside of the example post four directory, we're gonna add the example post four image. So if we CD inside of the example post four directory, and if I list out the contents, you can see I already have the example post four image right there. And this is what the directory structure for your site's gonna look like after you do that. You're gonna have the other three example posts and then the example post four directory and then that example post four image right there. And then here's the image. So you can just come over here and you can just save the image. You can grab it from here, grab it from the repository. And we're just gonna be doing a similar thing here for the example post five. So you would just create that directory and then you would go inside of the example post five directory and then you could just put the image inside of here. So this is what the directory structure is gonna look like. You're gonna have all five of the example posts inside of your examples directory and then the example post five image. And then right here is the image. And again, you can just get the image from right here or you can get it from the repository. All right, so now that we've created our example post four and example post five markdown files and we've added our images for that, let me just clear this and I'm just going to close out of that terminal and let me just close out of this terminal as well. And I'm going to open up the index.post.view file. So now we wanna get on to viewing the pagination pages. So after adding the titles and front matter to the example pages and adding the post images, you should now have the following pagination pages. So if we come over here, we have our entry page right here and then we should be able to go to our page two. And let me just see if I can restart the local development server here. So then we can see the other example post right here. So there you go. So now we're on page two. And you can see that we have two example posts here on page two. And then if we go to page three, you can see that we have our example post five right here on this page. So we have our entry page, our second page, and then our third page right there. All right, so that's all these links right there. All right, so having these three pagination pages allows will allow us to view the pagination links in every scenario that we mentioned in the beginning of the post. So we have our entry page, which doesn't have a previous page to navigate to. Then we have the next page, so our middle page here, this will have a previous pagination link and a next pagination link. And then we have our last page, 
which will only have a previous pagination link. All right. So having, so like I mentioned, having those, we can view the pagination links in every scenario. Now, you may have noticed the ordering of the posts here. So the order of the posts may not be what you're expecting and may change each time you start the local development server. And this is because the blog plugin uses a date property to sort the posts, which it looks for on the front matter of each post page. Now, since we haven't added a date custom variable to the front matter blocks for the post pages, the blog plugin will not sort the posts in a predictable way. So we'll fix this issue in a future tutorial by adding the date custom variable to the front matter blocks of the post pages. So if you come over here and if we went to the example page one, for example, we're just going to add in a date custom variable here and then we're just going to give them dates and then this will sort the posts in a predictable manner for us because right now on the entry page we have example page one, example page two right there. And then if we go to the second one, now we have four and three, and maybe we wanted it to always be three and four there, and then to have the fifth one there, right? So if we set the dates up properly and the custom variables, that will allow us to fix that issue there. All right. So now if you have any questions about the example pages, about how to add them in the post directory, adding the titles to the post pages, adding the front matter to the post pages and or adding the post images, then you can check out the relevant sections from the previous tutorial. So you can check out tutorial 15 about the blog plugin, tutorial 17 about the index post layout, and then tutorial 18 that went over the index post images. All right, so now let's come over here and I'm going to open up the index post.view file and let me just close out that terminal. All right, so now we're gonna get into displaying the pagination links. So we're now ready to use the properties provided by the blog plugin client API to add the pagination links to the pagination pages. So we're going to display the pagination links using two router link components, one for the previous page and one for the next page. And we'll be wrapping each router link component in a div tag. All right, and then we'll wrap the div tags inside another div tag, which will which will place underneath the div tag that is being used to loop over the pagination pages. All right, so this is the div tag that's being used to loop over the pagination pages. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create that div tag, and this is going to wrap all of our router links here and the div tags that we'll be placing around each one of them. So we have our div tag right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a div tag right here. And then inside of here, we're going to create that router link tag. So that's what we'll be creating right there. And then we will be doing this for the other page as well. So you can come down here and you can see code. So we have our other router link right there. And I'm just going to copy this. And then paste that in. Oh, not that. And to paste this. So there you go. So that's what we got there. So if we come back up here. You can see that we have our div tag right here, which is underneath our looping over of all the posts. And then we've wrapped each one of our router links here in a div tag. All right, so the router link component is provided by view router. So you can come here to learn more about that, to learn more about view router. You can view the documentation right there and that gets installed when installing ViewPress. and the router link component is used for enabling user navigation for the site. So that allows us to navigate to different URLs on the site. And the target location for the link is specified by using the two prop and it renders as an A tag with the specified href by default. So these router links right here are gonna get rendered as A tags with the href value that we specify as this two prop right there. All right, so if you wanna learn more about the router link component, then you can check out the router link documentation right here to learn more about that. All right, now to display the pagination link for the previous page, We'll be using the pagination.hasPre property to check if the current pagination page has a previous page. And we'll use the pagination.prev link property to provide the path of the previous pagination page to the router link component to prop.
So if we come over here, what we're going to do is we're going to say v if, and then we're going to set that equal to this pagination dot as pre value. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to have our two prop right here. We're going to bind this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be equal to the pagination dot read link. All right. So that's what we have there. And so you can see here that we're using this pagination dot has prev. So this is a Boolean value and that's going to determine if we have a previous link or not. And if we do, it's going to render this router link. And if we don't, it's not going to render it. And then we have our two prop right here. And then we are binding our pagination dot prev link. And this is the path to the previous pagination page based off of our current page. Now, similarly to display the pagination link for the next page, we'll be using the pagination dot has next property to check if the current pagination page has a next page. And we'll use the pagination dot next link property to provide the path of the next pagination page to the router link component two prop. So if we come down here, what we're going to do is we're going to say the if, and then we're going to set this to be equal to the pagination dot as next right here. And then we're going to bind the two prop and we're going to set that equal to the pagination dot next link. All right, and we'll format that, and then we'll save that. So what we have here is, again, we have our VIF. So this, if we have a next link, it's going to render this router link right here. So you can think if we're on the entry page, you know, if we have a next page, then we'll have our next pagination link right there, shown as this router link. And then we're the path, so for the two prop, we're using this pagination dot next link and that'll provide the path to the next pagination page in our list of pagination pages. All right. Now we discussed the properties above in detail in the ViewPress tutorial 16 pagination post. So if you need a refresher or if you have any questions, then you can read through the relevant sections in that post. All right. Now the index post view file is going to look something like this. So you can see that we have our, let me just scroll down right here so you can see that we have our div tag which is wrapping all of the router links that we just made and then we have our div tag right here which is wrapping the router links and then you can see right over here that we have our vif with the pagination dot has prev and then we're binding the two prop and we're setting that to be this pagination dot prev link and then inside of here what we're going to do is we're just going to provide some text so we're going to say we're going to give it this value right there of prev. So that's what's going to be displayed on the web page to the user for them to click on. And then we're just going to come down here and we're just going to type in next for the next link. All right, so we'll save that. So we'll format the file and then we'll save it. And this is what the, what it's going to look like. And let me just see if I can format this a little bit neater. it's on the own line right there. I'll just do the same for this. Let's see if it cooperates. All right. So there you go. All right. So then you can see we have our prev text right there and then our next text. So right down here, we have the router link for the next page. We have the pagination dot has next property. And this will determine if we have a next page. And then we have the pagination dot next link, which is the path to the next pagination page. And we're binding it to that two prop right there. All right. So that's what the index post view file is going to look like. And here, like I mentioned, we're using the vif directive to conditionally render the pagination links by using the values of the pagination dot has prev and the pagination dot has next properties and the block of code using the vf directory will only be rendered if the expression provided to it returns a truthy value so you can come over here to learn more about those values in javascript all right 
And then we're also binding that to prop right here by placing that colon before it, which is shorthand for vbind. And using vbind allows us to bind the JavaScript expressions to the HTML attributes. So that's what's allowing us to use these JavaScript expressions with this to prop right there. And if you have any questions or you want to learn more about conditional rendering or vbind, then you can check out these resources right here for conditional rendering or vbind documentation for that. And then this article right here on using vbind in view. All right. So now that we've done this, if we go back over to the page, now you can see right down here that we have our next pagination link right there. So if we click on this, it should bring us to page two, which it does. And let me just zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. And if we go back, you can see we're back on the entry page. And now if we click next, we're on the last page. You can see right here that we only have the previous page since this is our last page. So we can click the previous button right here to bring us back to our second page. We hit the previous button again to go back to the first page. All right, so you can see that we have our pagination buttons pagination links there and they're all working bringing us to the expected pages and it just lets the user click here instead of going up there and typing it or using the buttons up here all right so let's just discuss the entry page html so after updating the index post view file with the code above if you navigate to the entry page like we just did you should now see the next pagination link like we saw being displayed with some styling provided by the default theme so you should now be able to click on that next pagination link like we did, and it should take you to the next page in the list of pagination pages. So it's just going to take us to that second page there. And this is what the body tag is going to look like. So if we come over here and if we inspect the browser and if we go to the body tag, and then if we go inside of the app, the global layout, the theme default content, and then if you come inside of here, you can see that here is our div tag that's wrapping our, our example post right here. And then if you come down here to this div tag, you can see that we have our div tag for our previous, which is just going to be empty because we don't have a previous link on the entry page. And then we have our div tag. And then right here is that router link, which gets rendered as this a tag. And then that href with that path to the second pagination page right there. All right. And then you can see that it has that value right there of next. All right. So that's what the user can then click on. And this brings us to our second page. All right. So you can see here's the HTML right there for that. And then the page two HTML. So navigate to that page like we just did. And now we can see the previous and next pagination links being displayed with some styling provided by the default theme right there. We have our previous and our next right there. And now you should be able to click on them like we did to be able to go back to the previous page which is the entry page in this case. And then we should also be able to go to the next page, which is the last page for us. All right. And this is the HTML for the second page. So if you come over here, you can see that we have our div tag, which is wrapping everything. And then our div tag, which we have around that router link. And then the router link again gets rendered as this a tag with this href value, which is going back to the entry page. So the path to the entry page, which is post. And then we have our text right there of prev. And then we have our div tag wrapping our other router link for the next page. And this is the path to the next page right there. And then we have our text of next right there. All right, so that's that router link right there. So then if we click on the next one, this will bring us to our third page or the last page in our list here of pagination pages. And here is the HTML for page three. So if you navigate to the third page, like we just did, you should now see the prev pagination link being displayed with again, some styling provided by the default theme. So there is the prev tag right there. And then you should be able to click on that like we did before. And it should take you back to the previous page, which is that second page for us. And then the HTML for the body tag for the third page is going to look something like this, where you're going to have our div tag right here, which is wrapping our router links. And then we have our div tag for our previous link right here. So that router link rendered as that a tag with the href to the path to the previous page right there, which is page two, the text of prev. And then we have our div tag wrapping our other router link for the next page. But since this is our last page in our pagination, in our list of pagination pages, it's just, it's not going to be shown here. 
So we just have the comment right there being displayed. And then we can just click right here and we can go back to the second page and then we go back to the first page and you could go all the way back to the entry page. All right. So that is how to add the pagination links. All right. So in this video, we added more example pages. So we added example page four and example page five so that we could view the pagination links in all the different scenarios. So we added the titles and the front matter to it. We added the images and then we took some time to view the pagination pages. And again, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, then be sure to look at the previous videos and the previous tutorials. And then we went over how to display the pagination links. So we updated our index post view file right there. Then we took a look at the entry page HTML, the page two HTML, and then the page three HTML. All right, so in the next video, you may have noticed that the styling for the previous and the next pagination links doesn't look too good. So in the next tutorial, we're going to begin styling these links. So, and then we're also going to be adding left and right error icons to the previous and next pagination links, similar to how we have down here where we have that error right there. So we're going to be adding that and then we're going to be styling it. So if you come over here, you can see how they're just kind of sitting right on top of each other. So we're going to space them out. We're going to put those arrows in there to make it look a little bit nicer. All right, so that's what we'll be doing in the next video.